More protests are expected along the Gaza border. Palestinians are marking 70 years since the Nakba. It was the mass displacement of Palestinians during the founding of the State of Israel. The latest demonstrations come a day after the deadliest clashes in the area in weeks. Israeli forces opened fire on Palestinian protesters on Monday. Nearly 60 Palestinians are dead and thousands injured. The violence broke out as the U.S. opened its embassy in Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the U.N. Security Council is due to meet to discuss the clashes on the Gaza-Israeli border. The Arab League has also called for an extraordinary meeting to discuss the U.S. embassy move. Well, as we mentioned, Monday's violence on the Gaza border was the deadliest in weeks. Adel Mahroui has been speaking to some Palestinian protesters and filed this report. Another round of violence at the Israel-Gaza border fence. The bloodiest in months. In just one day, the number of Palestinians killed and injured has nearly matched all the casualties in the past two months. Our Zionist enemy is afraid to leave his weapon and face us unarmed. It's our right to breach the Israeli border because it's not Israeli. It's Palestinian land that has been forcibly taken from us. Here at the eastern Gaza border with Israel, scores came to rally in what has been dubbed as the Grand Return March. Across the border fence, protesters separate in attempts to breach the border. Palestinians of all ages came to join or watch the demonstration. Some parents have brought their kids. What is happening in Gaza is an inevitable result to the fact that Israeli occupation is trying to impose on us to establish its state on more Palestinian land. It is a must for these youth to revolt in this manner. On May 15th, Palestinians will observe Nakba the Arab word for catastrophe, when more than 700,000 Palestinians lost their lands to Israel in 1948. <laughs> Earlier protests were also sparked by U.S. embassies' move to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. The number of casualties is growing quickly, and it seems so far that it has by far exceeded the total casualties seen in the past few weeks. And to many Palestinians, this is just the beginning. The least they say that they can express the magnitude of irritation they've seen from the United States moving its embassy while they mark 70 years in occupation. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, from the Gaza-Israeli fence border. Well, let's get you more now on those tensions there and the developments in Gaza. I'm joined by Stephanie Fried in Ramallah in the West Bank. Stephanie, deadly clashes there occurring on the Gaza border. Israel is blaming Hamas for inciting violence. What can you tell us about that? Um, well, Israelis uh, and Israel in general, they're saying that this is all about Hamas encouraging people to break through the separation uh, between the separation fence between Gaza and Israel. And th this is on the shoulders of Hamas. And that's Israel. They're saying that this is not about Israeli responsibility. Israel is going to... Um, protect its sovereign territory and that if anyone tries to break through that border fence or the fence dividing between the two sides they're going to open fire they're going to open fire and shoot as we see to kill uh, there are snipers lined up there uh, on the Israeli side now where I am now is in the West Bank town of Ramallah and there's been uh, of course it's Nakba or catastrophe day here there's been a, a tremendous amount of identification here with the people who are suffering, um, being injured, and those who were killed in um, Gaza. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and here in Ramallah, Abu Mazen, uh, that's President Abbas, he's uh, the president of the Palestinian Authority, he has called three days of mourning. So right now on the street that you can see here behind me, this was uh, scenes on Monday at the time of the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, wild demonstrations, protests. Um, however, today it's quiet right now, but people are in prayers, and we're expecting once the mosques let out that possibly there are going to be more protests today on Nakba Day, Catastrophe Day.
Beatrice? Well, uh, Stephanie, is there a sense, though, that uh, Israelis support these actions on the Gaza border? <coughs> what sort of reactions have there been from ordinary uh, Israelis? <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, ordinary Israelis, again, they're justifying. They listen, uh, for the most part, to what their military says. Of course, people in Israel are drafted into the military, so they are very, very sympathetic with soldiers. Um, they listen to what the government says as well, and so they take that in and they say, well, you know, these people approach the fence and it's on them. Um, not understanding fully, uh, necessarily, uh, about rules of engagement, about use of sniper fire um, to, to stop protests rather than to maim for life or kill, uh, riot dispersal. And so, of course, those who understand, and that's human, human rights organizations and on and on, and those who have been in war zones, um, understand the difference between what it is to m break up a riot versus what it is to shoot to kill. Uh, so Israelis very much support uh, the government actions. They say they don't want Palestinians breaking over for the most part. This is the most part. This is a majority. Don't, they don't want uh, Palestinians from Gaza breaking through into Israel. Um, and so they're supporting the military, supporting the government. And that really is a majority of Israelis. Others say they are very much against the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. They don't understand what the government is doing. And there's been criticism that the government, let's say the prime minister, his wife, um, showing up with selfies with Ivanka Trump and her husband Jared Kushner while people were dying uh, along the fence dividing Gaza and Israel. All right, uh, Stephanie Fried following the developments for us there in Ramallah in the West Bank.